Today I'd like to talk about Simon's algorithm. And basically I'd like to talk about it in the context of the evolution of uh, the development of the algorithm itself. Uh, initially, David Deutsch, a student of John Wheeler, um, uh, wrote a paper on quantum Turing machines. And uh, sometimes later, uh, John Myers found that the, the concept of a quantum Turing machine was flawed. That somehow the clock of the Turing machine uh, became entangled uh, with the data and caused um, uh, computational problems. Then um, uh, Deutsch came along again with the um, first quantum algorithm, which was later extended by Joza to the deutsch joza algorithm. Following that, um, immediately there was a similar algorithm by Bernstein and Varani, Vazirani, excuse me. And um, then Simon, after watching or uh, reading Joseph's or studying Joseph's algorithm, uh, immediately developed um, a quantum algorithm. Uh, he was attempting to uh, prove that quantum uh, computation gave nothing to um, uh, theory of computation. Instead, he found the first quantum algorithm that was exponentially faster than any possible classical algorithm for the same problem. This is a most amazing result. Um, he submitted his talk on the, his algorithm to Fox, uh, the IEEE Fox conference. It was rejected, unfortunately. But Peter Shore, who happened to be on the committee, recognized uh, Simon's algorithm as very, being very important and central and saw its true propen uh, potential as a, the methods provided were methods for finding periods of functions. And this could be used to solve many other uh, important problems. Uh, I'd like to also mention that this line of thought has developed today into a whole class of algorithms called quantum hidden subgroup algorithms. Um, I believe it was Kitaev who recognized the common uh, mathematical structure uh, and computational structure of these algorithms. Moreover, um, let's take a look at um, review uh, uh, the deutsch joza algorithm. And see, it has a very simple structure as we've seen before. Uh, we first apply Hadamard transforms. Then we um, apply a unitary transformation representing the coin and, um, in the algorithm itself. And then we again apply the Fourier transforms which we call the Hadamard transforms. And out comes the, um, uh, in the first qubit, you can see that all the information is, um, can easily be extracted by measuring the first qubit. Um, oh, I should mention if F is a fair coin and balanced, then in measurement, um, the uh, left term drops out and it's simply um, ket, 1-1. One, one. We measure the first to know that it's uh, balanced. Uh, if uh, it's, it's an unfair coin, uh, then uh, that is constant. Then upon measurement, we measure a zero and thereby uh, know that it is an unfair coin. So that's a brief review. And let's go on to Simon's algorithm. and. Uh, what you're about to see is an algorithm that looks like, very much like uh, the David Deutsch algorithm. And here it is. You have the Fourier transforms and you have the unitary transformation representing a Boolean function in the center and a final uh, um, Fourier transform. Let's take a look more closely at this, but I'd like to emphasize that the two algorithms are very simple, uh, similar. And Simon's um, 
uh, there's an evolution of ideas. Simon's algorithm can be thought as a major e extension of uh, Deutsch's algorithm. Uh, just for fun, I put this in. This is uh, uh, the Simon's algorithm on an optical workbench and uh, as implemented on an optical workbench. All right, let's begin. Um, as a preamble to Simon's algorithm, um, let's let uh, blackboard F sub 2 be the field of two elements, 0 and 1, and let F2 super n be the vector space of binary n tuples with inner product defined as uh, inner product mod 2. We're in the field of two elements. Simon's problem is the following. Given a 2 to 1 function called an oracle, uh, f from um, uh, all n-bit strings into all n-bit strings with unknown period a, that is, with an unknown element a which satisfies the condition so shown, uh, find the period a. This is Simon's problem. And it has been proven that all classical algorithms for solving Simon's algorithm have time complexity big O of 2 to the n over 2. Um, most amazingly, the quantum algorithm by, by Daniel so, uh, Simon solves this problem in polytime. Um, this is surprising, as I've said before, because uh, a day, uh, uh, Daniel Simon was trying to, to debunk quantum computing and uh, developed an algorithm that has improved the efficacy of quantum computing. Okay, be, and also before beginning, we'd like to describe uh, Simon's algorithm. Uh, and to do so, there, there are two types of vector spaces involved in this algorithm. Uh, the first is a 2 to the n dimensional Hilbert space H sub 2 to the n over the complex number C, which is the state space of the n qubits involved in the algorithm. The second vector space involved is an n dimensional vector space uh, blackboard F sub 2 over the field of two elements. Um, and this is used as labels for the basis elements of the other Hilbert space. Keep that in mind. Uh, I hope there'll be no confusion as to how the two vector spaces are used. Um, to simply describe Simon's algorithm, we identify um, um, the elements of the vector space uh, f2 sub n with just all binary strings of length n, and in turn identify all binary strings of length n with the integers uh, 0 through 2 to the n minus 1. Under this identification now, we have a linear ordering of the integers, which induces a linear ordering on our field of, of binary strings and on the set of all binary strings, and we will use that later. All transformations are reversible actions, unitary transformations, excuse me. So by continuing, we need to know how to implement a non-reversible function. This is a this is a a problem. There are the functions the function implemented in Simon's algorithm is non-reversible. We'd like to implement it as a unitary transformation, and unitary transformations are uh, reversible. This can be done by enlarging G to the following reversible function, as so shown. What we've done is we've increased the domain to include both the argument and function values. And our new extended function is now reversible. In fact, uh, um, it's, if you apply it twice, you're back where you started. Uh, here, plus denotes addition mod 2. Thus, the Boolean function f can be implemented uh, in unitary form uh, in the following fashion. Here's the first Hilbert space meant to hold the arguments of the function. The second Hilbert space meant or created to hold the function values and uh, the plus denotes mod 2. And um, 
as an exercise, I suggest um, you find the inverse of the above unitary transformation. And the hint is uh, just simply compute u sub g squared. Uh, this is a unitary transformation uh, because it simply permutes the basis elements. It's, it's a permutation matrix since it's orthogonal, and hence it's unitary. Um, I'd like to remind people that um, in this wiring diagram, a line with a slash n denotes n qubit lines. And um, so we see we have two n qubits going into the unitary transformation representing Simon's oracle. In preparation for a description of Simon's algorithm, uh, we, uh, what we'll, we proceed to implement the oracle f as a unitary transformation. And here it is, as so defined. Uh, let h2n be the 2 to the n dimensional Hilbert space with orthonormal basis, uh, as so shown. And let u sub f denote the following unitary transformation. Uh, here is Simon's algorithm. Step zero, initialize prepare, by preparing the following state. Essentially, this, each a ket zero, the first ket zero, represents n, a binary string of length n of all zeros, and so does the second. And um, so we initialize it to this element in the Hilbert space h2 to the n tensor h2 to the n. Step one, we apply the infold Hadamard transform. We apply the Hadamard transform to each qubit in the left register. We leave the right register alone. In this way, we have created a superposition uh, in the first register of all binary strings from 0 up to 2 to the n minus 1. Step 2, uh, we uh, apply u sub f that's our oracle, represented as a unitary transformation, um, to transform our state into psi 1. And now we have a state which consists of a superposition of all argument function value pairs. This is uh, an amazing superposition. Simon's algorithm uh, applies u sub f to this, as I said before. Step two, if we'd like, we don't really need to do this step, but it makes it easy to understand. We measure the right register to obtain um, the following expression, where we've chosen J0 less than J0 plus A using our linear ordering. If we could do the same thing um, if we simply ignored the register and the rest of the algorithm. Step two prime, and we've gone through that. Step three, we apply the Hadamard transform to the left register um, uh, to obtain an expression for um, the state of our uh, two n qubits, as so indicated. And um, there, it's a, there's um, there's quite a bit of algebraic manipulation here, but you can very quietly and sit down and. You can see that these uh, formulas are correct. Uh, the key thing to see is um, if we look at the final expression shown on the last line, uh, uh, it simplifies quite a bit. If we look at uh, 1 plus minus 1 raised to the a dot k, that's um, the dot is the inner product in the vector space f2 to the n, f, f sub 2 uh, uh, super n. We see that uh, if the inner product is 0, the resulting expression it takes the value 1, and it vanishes if the inner product is 1. Now. Um, we've just applied the Hadamard transform, and so the expression after that observation simplifies to the following. The sum is now over all integers k, whose inner product as vectors with the unknown period k is zero. 
So next, in step four, we'll measure the left register to obtain a state of this form, where k0 is now a binary n-tuple such that its inner product with the unknown period uh, a is equal to zero. We have ab ab abstracted some information with this measurement about the unknown period a. And so what we need to do is simply repeat steps 0 th uh, through 4 uh, enough until we have enough linear equations um, to solve a system of linear equations over gf of 2. And this is Simon's algorithm, very simple algorithm. Um, and as an exercise, I would like to give you the following um, function with a, bo a Boolean function uh, with hidden period and find the uh, find in the standard basis the 16 by 16 matrix for unitary representation representing uh, use of F.